I'm Joseph Haldane, Executive Director of the International Academic Forum, IAFOR, and I'm here today along the riverside in Osaka for the Asian Conference on the Social Sciences 2014 with the Asian Conference on Sustainability, Energy and the Environment. And I'm joined today by Amy Sarkowski and Yukinori Komine, uh, both of Harvard University, of the Harvard University Medical School and the Boston uh, Children's Hospital and of the Reichau uh, Institute. Um, you were uh, speakers in our plenary session yesterday um, together and you joined up these concepts of soft power but also of the uh, Convention on Persons with Disabilities, the UN Convention. It's quite an unusual pairing. Perhaps you can give us a brief synopsis of your, uh, uh, perhaps Amy, starting with you. Okay. So I'm a psychologist and Yuki Nori is a political scientist. And so we like the idea of combining forces, doing really an interdisciplinary approach to take a look at the US responses to the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. I come from a background of disability studies and I work primarily with individuals who are deaf. And Yuki looks at international relations and US foreign policy. So we like the idea of using the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities as um, a, a way to look at how the US has done, looked at international treaties um, and sort of to make the case for why implementation of the convention might be a good idea. So who came up with this particular idea to join forces? I think we developed interest in this subject um, um, res respectively. While I was working on my research um, analysis of uh, the concept of soft power, I was talking about the implications of uh, uh, the practice of soft power um, and U.S. foreign policy. And then um, um, Amy, on the other hand, uh, was um, examining this uh, issue of disabilities, and I thought this could be connected. Uh, there are some overlapped areas. Uh, in terms of America's um, um, prestige, um, image in global politics, and then how um, the United States treats um, its minorities uh, could actually enhance its overall prestige in global politics. America can uh, uh, lead by uh, example. Do you think this is particularly important at a time where many uh, global onlookers and, and many people within the states uh, itself are sort of having a crisis of confidence in the U.S. leadership role? Very much so. I think there are a number of ways in which the U.S. has been polarized and stagnant. And I think within the U.S. there's a lot of concern about the Congress and not being able to get things done. And I think outside of the U.S., looking at the U.S., there, there's also that perception that there's a lot of infighting and, and difficulties in moving things forward. Traditionally, disability issues have been an area in which both sides could kind of come together and, and make a difference. Until today, uh, there's been a stalemate sort of with the convention. Uh, President Obama signed the convention in 2009 and sent it to Congress, and Congress failed to ratify it. At this time, it's coming back through again. and. For potentially for another vote over the course of this summer. Mm -hmm. So we feel like that the timing is right to sort of think about, instead of it being a Republican or Democrat kind of issue, that really if we think in terms of the global impact and we look at soft power, which is you know how, how America can be perceived internationally, um, by doing the right thing and ratifying this convention, I think that has the potential to address that divide within the U.S. and also allow the U.S. to be seen a little bit more positively on the international stage. Okay, so um, the ratification, which hasn't yet happened, do you, do you think this is going to happen um, soon? Is, is, it on, is it on the radar? It seems more likely. And then uh, uh, this is one of the cases in which um, um, bipartisan uh, basis actually already exists. Uh, for example, um, Republican Senator uh, John McCain and then the former uh, Democrat Senator uh, John Kelly, uh, currently Sec uh, Secretary of State, they have developed a very um, uh, strong uh, cooperating relationship. And um, it is creating an uh, interesting example, actually. And then it is also showing that the United States can be, uh, once again, uh, respectful for um, the UN framework, but also the existence of international uh, uh, treaties and arrangements. So this is um, uh, becoming an interesting case, actually. Okay, have, have you looked at this because um, I noticed uh, it, during the presentation that you referred to Japan as one of those countries which hasn't ratified, that's correct? So have you, have you had talks um, with people in Japan uh, about whether this is going to be ratified soon? Are they waiting for a US lead? 
there's some speculation around that. I think that that isn't really our area of expertise. I'm not sure that we can speak to that in particular, but I think that there has been a history of that, um, such that Japan will sometimes look to the U.S. in order to um, ascertain what their options might be. Okay. Okay, well, let's, let's move on now to, um, to talk about some of the, the other presentations you, you might have seen at the conference. Uh, have, you, have you seen anything that's uh, excited you this morning? Many. One of the areas I found quite interesting is uh, the increasing importance of uh, uh, cultures, identities, and norms in today's diverse world. More and more presenters are talking about cultural differences, and they're regarding differences as a uniqueness, not as an obstacle. And this really serves um, an important um, uh, direction approach, actually. Uh, and um, uh, it matches with the, um, uh, the conference's overall spirit, actually, uh, which is a better understanding of um, a multicultural uh, society and diversity in today's world. Well, exactly. So here, here we'll, um, you've just wonderfully touched upon the, the intercultural nature of what we're, we're trying to do here with people from 40 different countries, yourself being a, of Japanese origin. Um, so the, the other big thing we've talked about is interdisciplinarity, interdisciplinarity in your own work. Right. But perhaps you could say something on the importance of interdisciplinarity in your work and also going forward. I see. Um, go ahead. One of the things that we've encountered is that the definitions that we believe to be true from our own specific disciplines, we are forced to sort of question them and look at them more critically when encountering and working with a person who comes from a different discipline or disciplinary background. For the example, um, identities is something that in psychology is defined in one way, mm -hmm. and what that means in political science yes. is another thing. And in cultural studies, yes, another, etc. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So there, I think it's good because it takes people out of their silos and allows them to see things from another perspective. Um, Having strong grounding and expertise in one's own discipline is important too. And as we sort of discussed before, the idea of interdisciplinary doesn't mean that no one, the people are not experts in anything, and they're just generalists. I think that it really involves being expert in a certain area and being open to see the connections yes. between different ways of thinking mm -hmm. about things. Well, Amy Yukinori, uh, thank you very much for joining us today, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the event and the rest of your time in Japan. Much. And for those of you uh, watching, I hope you get a chance to come and join us either in Osaka, uh, in Japan, in the United Kingdom, in Brighton, or in Providence, Rhode Island for one of our conferences. Please keep up to date by looking at our website at www.i4.org. Thank you very much.